I'm a consultant psychiatrist. I work with adults between the ages of 18 and 65, and I'm based up at the Warmford Hospital. And I've had, a, I suppose, a long-standing interest, passion uh, relating to music and, and its sort of broader mood effects, I suppose. And um, I think the longer I've been practicing as a psychiatrist, the more apparent it's, it's become that, in fact, if we are to enable people to get as, as well as they can, we need to move beyond just prescribing medications and to think much br more broadly about those things which contribute to people's well-being. And I suppose f for music particularly, it's a very interesting medium insofar as it allows people to, to experience emotion um, and, in, and have that induced um, and, and reflect upon that in a way that actually is very helpful in being able to recognise how you feel, to be able to feel something but also know that you can step away from that and to feel more in control. I st studied at Christchurch College, which is where Burton was based, and The Anatomy of Melancholy is one of those, I suppose, famous texts within the psychiatric literature and one that has stood the test of time in a way that many things haven't. And I think that's what's so absolutely remarkable about it is that here we are 400 years later and many, if not all, of the things that he's talking about still have some relevance. Okay, you know, the way we think about diet has moved on and the way we think about sleep and things similarly. But actually, the, the, the fundamental ideas are still as, as relevant today as, as they were then. Burton talks about music very much as a cure for melancholy, and a cure that um, is effective even though even in those people who are who are most unwell. He talks quite a lot about music and its power to bring even the most depressed, most melancholic individual back to life. And it's interesting to think about the parallels today, actually, in terms of the use of music with people with dementia, for example, who actually haven't been able to express themselves but can do so in, in that context. He also talks about it in terms of being social, so that being done with other people, and being a really important part of celebration, of coming together, of eating, of mirth, of dance. So it's, it's not just seen in isolation, it's actually seen as being an important factor in a number of different activities that we know to be positively mood enhancing. And I think as we're seeing increasing uses of social prescribing, I think it's highly likely we'll begin to see music being quite regularly prescribed in the way that we'd suggest someone goes to the allotment. Actually, why aren't we suggesting they join a choir or join a, a music group? And I think in clinical practice, we're beginning to see music coming onto our wards. So in a lot of our child and adolescent environments, for example, some of the newer hospitals have a music room built in and a drum kit and all the rest of it. So actually, young people can go and express their emotions in, in, that, in that space, make music together, use that as part of their therapeutic journey. If I got the chance to meet Burton, I would love to explore with him how he went about researching all of this. What was the initial kind of motivation and what were the questions he asked? Because he covers such a wide range of topics. It's, it just is sort of mind blowing to think that you would come at this problem of melancholy and, and explore such a breadth and really how, I suppose, any insights he had about the interactions between those things and where he would have seen the future. I think that would be fascinating to know if he could look into the future, what would he have, he have thought might happen?